Hey, everyone, before we get knee deep into episode 22 of Katie's Corner and looking at the final stretch of the Major League Baseball regular season, we got to talk a little bit of football because it begins tonight. Bills and Rams defending Super Bowl champions against what a lot of people think is the favorites for the AFC to make the Super Bowl. So, you know, it's batting down the hatches. Everybody's looking at their fancy football teams. Of course, week one starts in Stead in, in in a full schedule, really, on Sunday. But hey, guess what? That means you can get ready for that week one action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL and friends of Godzilla Media. To celebrate the return of football, DraftKings is giving new customers a can't-miss offer where if you bet just $5 on any football game, you can get $200 in free bets instantly. That's right. If you want more action for opening night two, you, everyone that can experience the thrill of the DraftKings early win promotion, where if the team you bet gets up by seven or more points at any point during the game, you automatically win. That's right. Bet any NFL team of your choice. And if your team leads by seven points at any point during the game, you get paid instantly, even if the team loses. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code 518 to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's code 518 only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 or older and physically present in New York. Bonus issued is free bets. One early win token issued at opt-in. Money line bets only. Deposit and wagering restrictions apply. Eligibility in terms of DraftKings.com slash football terms. Gambling problem? Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. That said, welcome to Katie's Corner, episode 22 here on Gazilla Media, presented by our friends over at DraftKings, as well as Mohawk Conda and John Stone Supply. We start, of course, by looking at the standings because we are getting closer and closer towards the end of the 162 and getting towards the playoffs. We are, uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, we are officially a month away exactly to the end of the baseball season. If I recall, that final day is the 8th. I'm going to take a look at my calendar just to double check and make sure we're all on the same path. And the final answer is yes. We're looking at well, October 8th would actually be a Saturday, and they're, they're ending things, I believe, on the 5th. So we're actually a little less than that. We're, exa- we're pretty much four weeks straight away from the end of the baseball season in full. And here is how things look. We'll start in the National League, the senior circuit. Mets still a half game ahead of the Braves after sweeping the doubleheader yesterday. The Pirates, Mets at 87-51, Braves at 86-51. and and uh, if I remember correctly, the I know the Mets are off today. I'm just double checking to see if the I think Braves are playing today. Uh, although Braves are off as well, so that half game lead will maintain it for the Mets through today. Meanwhile, uh, the Phillies they're 11 back, and then the Marlins they're pretty much done. Nationals are already mathematically eliminated. They're the first team in the National League to be mathematically eliminated from any playoff contention. Uh, in the Central, Cardinals 81-56, to 56, nine and a half clear of the Brewers. In the West, the Dodgers, I mean, you could have given them the West a month ago. Uh, they're 94-42, and 42, 19 clear of the Padres, and that's that. As far as the American League is concerned, Yankees 83-54, and 54, five clear of the Rays, six and a half clear of the Blue Jays, 11 clear of Baltimore, and the Red Sox at the bottom, 67 and 71, 16 and a half back in the East. In the Central, the Guardians, 70 and 65, two clear of the Twins and the White Sox. Chicago making that final push to try and snatch victory out of the claws of defeat in the AL Central. Meanwhile, in the West, the Astros, 88 and 49, five clear of the Yankees for best record in the American League, and 11 clear of the Mariners for the West, by the way. Uh, back in the in National League for a quick second, Dodgers are nine are nine clear. Uh, excuse me, eight clear of the Mets, nine in the loss column for best record in the National League. Um, just to give you some perspective on that, looking at the wild card races, going back to the National League again as well. Braves hold the number one wild card spot. They're ten and a half clear of the of the wild card two and three teams, which are the Phillies and the Padres. They are percentage points tied. They are legitimately tied 
The Padres have played two more games than the Phillies. They're one and one in those two games. Uh, so they're tied for the second and third spots as of right now with Milwaukee four behind them and the Giants at nine and a half back. In the American League, the Oakland Athletics are the only team mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. The Rays hold the number one wild card spot at 77 and 58. The Mariners are a, uh, a game behind them for the two spot. And then the Blue Jays are holding down the three spot right now. But Toronto is only a half game behind Seattle and a game and a half behind Tampa. So at any point, you can see those three teams interchanging spots with Baltimore four and a half behind Toronto for the final spot. Twins and White Sox seven and a half back in the wild card. So now we move on to the Boston Red Sox. Fun while it lasted, yes. I already said it a week, the last few weeks. I mean, it was it was fun. It was fun for a little while. Uh, it was fun through June. And then the All-Star break came and everything just kind of fell apart. I mean, you're at a point now where uh, French Cordero, 60-day AL, done for the year. Uh, Eric Hosmer, D-I-L. Junior Downs, I-L. Nathan Eovaldi, I-L. Chris Sale, we all remember, done for the year. Uh, Cutter Crawford, I.L. This is just Tanner Houck, I.L. I mean, this is this 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 team just there's there's no way they can do anything at this point. I don't I don't care. I know that the Red Sox just I remember correctly they just swept Texas if I remember correctly four in a row. Uh, I, I get that. I, I get that you you took care of business against the Rangers. Good for you. You should have. But he also then just turned around and lost three in a row in Tampa Bay. So, really, any 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 last gasp for air you were hoping for, you just destroyed by losing three in a row in Tampa Bay. Now you have today off. You have three in Baltimore before having Monday off and then hosting the Yankees next, this coming Tuesday and Wednesday. It's It's just, it's done. Like, there's no way. There's no two ways about it. It's done. It's over, and I am just praying for October 5th to get here so you can play your last game, which is at home against Tampa, so you can go out and start golfing down in Florida in, in October 6th. That's pretty much long and short of it for the Red Sox. Um, there's no, there's no real way to dress it up. It's it's done. It's over. It's time to look to 2023 and just. Not let guys get too hurt to the point where they have a, a miserable off season down the road. Like there's there's no nice way for me to break it down really for the for the the Red Sox at this point. They just they are what they are at this point. So sorry, Boston fans, but it's been done for a while. The nails officially in the coffin in my the final nails officially in the coffin in my opinion. It's just a matter of time before they get mathematically mathematically eliminated. You know, it might not come for another week or two. But it's it's done, guys. Just 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 admit it. It's done. It's over. Good riddance. Uh, that being said, before we get into the New York baseball team, just want to remind you about our friends over at Johnstone Supply. Summer is coming to an end very soon, which means those colder temperatures are going to be getting out there. Pumpkin spice is already bringing fall into the picture. Of course, that means apple picking, apple orchards, and it means you need to get your heating checked to make sure you're not left out in the cold when the winter months arrive. And Johnstone Supply in Troy are the people to help you out. Ask them about their tremendous heating systems or their ability to come in and check to make sure your heating system is at 100% for when those winter months do come, whether it be from Goodman, Fujitsu, Westinghouse, any of those brands all terrific brands, all at great prices, anytime at Johnstone Supply. You can talk to George, who you've heard on previous episodes of Getting There with Gaz, a fellow podcast on the Godzilla Media Network. George, great dude, great story. Hook him up. Talk to him. Talk to Kev. Talk to James. Talk to Bird. Any of them. They will be able to take care of you to make sure you have a properly heated home this winter. Give them a call, 518-272-5922, or visit them in their hard location, 2600 6th Avenue in Troy. Make sure your heating system is set up for the colder fall and winter months that are coming right around the corner. 518-272-5922, johnstonesupply.com, or check them out at 2600 6th Avenue in Troy. That all being said, let's get into 
the New York Metropolitans. They, oh, um, they're in a situation where the Mets are just too hot at this point for the Mets to be able to get themselves to feel comfortable at all. And in a way, I like that because it means the Mets have to keep their foot on the gas pedal and can't afford to let up. They need to continue going out and doing what they need to do. Now, unfortunately, the Mets only took uh, – the Mets dropped two out of three to Washington over the Labor Day weekend, so they obviously were not paying attention to what they need to do. Well, then they go out and sweep yesterday's doubleheader at Pittsburgh – by a combined score of 15-1, to 1, thanks to great outings from Chris Bassett, as well as Jacob DeGrom. And now, after taking two of three from Pittsburgh, after a mini three-game losing streak, now you get today off. You get to go to Miami for three, then you come home for the Cubs and the Pirates for a combined seven games. This is where you can get your separation. Because you only have three more games against Atlanta, down in Atlanta, the first weekend of October. Friday, September 30th, Saturday, October 1st, Sunday, October 2nd. It's the final weekend of the season. The second to last series. Now is when you can get the separation you've been trying to get. Because this schedule has 10 games in a row against sub-500 teams that really have no chance at all making the playoffs. Okay? Then you get three at Milwaukee, who are still clinging and clutching to any possibility of a wild card. And then you have three at Oakland, followed by two against Miami. This is the opportunity. 15 of your next 18 games are against teams who aren't even trying to compete for playoff spots at this point. This is the time. In the meanwhile, let me pull up the Atlanta Braves schedule real quick so you can get an idea of how much you can provide yourself that separation. Yes, I know the Braves are high. Yes, I know they're winning, 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 winning. They haven't lost in September yet. They're 6 and 0. They would they beat teams 37 to 15. But they've also been playing schlubs. They played the at Oakland just now for two, and then they beat Miami for three, and they played, they beat, took two out of three from Colorado. They're not exactly playing world beaters, but you look at their schedule, their schedule is much more difficult for themselves than it is for the Mets, okay? You take a look at the, the Braves right now. They continue their West Coast trip with three in Seattle this weekend, then three at the Giants, who are down but not completely out. There's still a chance they go on a run. They could sneak into a wild card spot. Then they come home for three against the Phillies, who are also scratching and clawing to get one of those wild card spots. Then three at home against Washington. Then back to Philly for four. This is the chance for the Mets to get the separation they need to lock up the East in the next few weeks so that that series in Atlanta the last weekend of uh, the last weekend of the season doesn't even matter. This is where they can do it. It's by playing 15 of your next 18 against teams, not even in playoff contention, while the Braves are playing games against teams that need every game that they can possibly win in Seattle, San Francisco, and Philadelphia. The only team they're playing in the next three weeks, basically, that's completely out of contention is Washington. And they play Washington twice, Monday the 19th to the 21st, and then Monday the 26th through Wednesday the 28th. But by the time they play at Washington, which is during the week leading up to the final Mets series that weekend, the East could be done by then if the Mets take advantage of things properly. Now, as far as the injury standpoint is concerned, Tyler McGill, he's up to AAA now. LeCay's up to AA. And they are potential strong options for the bullpen down the stretch, which is much needed for this Mets staff. I mean, don't get me wrong. The Mets bullpen has been good-ish, but adding McGill and Lucchese potentially to the back end could be even better because Bass has been doing a great job. Uh, Tywin Walker's doing great. 
obviously Scherzer and DeGrom are taking care of things. So you're in a good spot with the rotation. Now it's just a matter of batting down the hatches when it comes to the back, the back end of things. Um, obviously, Diaz is Diaz. Anafino's had a great year. Seth Lugo's doing very well. Um, however, on a side note, Max Scherzer, though, uh, is apparently skipping his start on Friday. He scheduled the pitch on Friday. And according to things, he's going to the 15-day IL. It's not a significant injury, though. Um, the move is being made retroactive to Saturday due to left side irritation, um, which I, which Scherzer calls is the, the left side is just feeling achy and that he does not have a muscle strain in the area. He says, quote, I don't have one specific spot that you can point to where that hurts. It's just general fatigue on the whole left side. Um, now, remember, he also had a left oblique injury earlier in the season. Um, but here's the thing. Like, if Scherzer's just going to miss one start, I'm okay with that. I'm fine with it. Again, it's not like the Mets are facing world beaters in the next few weeks. I mean, if, if he's going to miss a start, I'm okay with him missing a start in Miami. I can live with that. If he has to miss a start in Miami, which it looks like he's going to, and if he misses the start that he'd be scheduled for Wednesday against the Cubs, if he misses two starts against the Cub, the, the Marlins and the Cubs, I can live with that. I can live with that if I'm a Mets fan. But anything beyond that, that's when I'm going to start to get worried. So we'll keep an eye on the Scherzer thing. Um, and just hope that it's only one or two starts that he's missing and that he can come out and take care of business after the fact, which would be, if we, if we project out when Scherzer would usually be starting. Again, he was scheduled to start Friday in Miami. Then he would have been projecting forward to Wednesday against the Cubs and then Monday the 19th in Milwaukee. And then sometime either Saturday or Sunday in uh, the 24th or 25th in Oakland. So that would mean he would have been on track to pitch towards the end of the Atlanta series at in that first weekend of October. So if you can get Scherzer back to start that Milwaukee series in 10 days, I'm okay with it. I can, I can, if I'm Buck Walter, I'll be like, okay, listen, sit out two starts. We don't need you for Miami. We don't really need you for for Chicago. You do you. Relax. Just be on the bench. Be a good true leader for us. And then we'll revisit the situation next week and hope that we, we can wrap you up for, mon for Monday the 19th at Milwaukee. If I'm Buck Walter, that's my train of thought. Because at this point, you're just trying to ramp up for the postseason so that you're in your best stride going into a wild card weekend or whatever it may be that you're playing in uh, to start off the, the postseason. So that's where I'm at if I'm Buck Walter. I wouldn't stress too much. Just cross fingers and hope that it's it's nothing more than just one or two starts. If we get to the point where maybe returning from Milwaukee becomes questionable, then you can start getting a little iffy about it. But for right now, I wouldn't freak out too much. You're, you're in a position where you're just ready to go. Okay. Now we get to the Yankees. The final push starts now. Okay, it, it, it's it, it's got to go. You got to go. Um, the Yankees right now, like I mentioned, they're like seven clear of the Rays. Uh, excuse me, five clear of the Rays, six and a half clear of the Toronto Blue Jays. That's what I was thinking. Um, um, let me let me let me surmise. What happened in August? Because since then the Yankees are now four and two in September to start the month. Let me summarize August in this way, because this is something that Aaron Boone and Paul O'Neill both commented on early in the year when it seemed like uh, certain guys were hot and certain guys were cold at the same time in the lineup, and. People were concerned, as my alarm goes off, that I didn't need to go off. Um, and people were concerned about the guys that were cold more so than praising the guys that were hot. 
And what Boone and what uh, Aaron Boone and Paul O'Neill both said during the year was this. Early in the year, they said the worst thing that can happen is everyone goes cold at once. And unfortunately, it's pretty much what happened in the month of August. Aside from Aaron Judge, you can make the argument that everybody on the team went cold. Not just hitting wise. I'm talking everybody in general. I could like really the only the only part of the team that didn't go completely cold was the starting pitching. That's that's legitimately the only argument you can make for things that didn't go wrong. I guess the Yankees lost two out of three in Tampa last weekend with Herman having a terrible start. Uh, last Friday. But then they only lose 2-1 to one to Tampa on Saturday. Then they win a, uh, then they win a pitcher's duel 2-1 to one Sunday. And then you go ahead and take your first three from the Twins. Including a crazy 5-4 to four first game of a doubleheader in 12 innings. So now you're, you're taking care of business against Minnesota and making things even more difficult for them to get into the wild card or potentially win the Central. You finish up with them today. Then you host the race for three. And this is, this is, this is really good for them because they're in a stretch where they're going to have a few extra days off coming up that they wouldn't normally have. And it gives them more time to potentially get guys right and back up to the big club. Because if they're going through anything right now, it's it's some injury mess. Because here's where the Yankees are at injury-wise. Ben Intendi, IL, right wrist, broken, needs surgery. And this is right when things were starting to turn right side up for Ben Intendi, too. He was just starting to feel his groove and just starting to get comfortable as a Yankee, and then this happens. Um, Harrison Bader, right now he's lined up to start a rehab assignment early next week. Rizzo had an epidural on his back, ended up going to the IL, but he should be starting prep for return very soon. Nestor threw a bullpen Monday. If I remember correctly, it looks like he's starting today in the closeout game against Minnesota. And I'll double check that right now in a second. Let me take a look here. Uh, projected starters for today. We have Nestor Cortez against Sonny Gray for tonight, 705. There you go. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just a case of needing to get through that struggle in August and then seeing the land on the other side. And the Yankees are in that position because here's here here's the situation right now, okay? And don't forget, Zach Britton is potentially right around the corner for coming back to that bullpen. Like, think about that for a second, okay? We'll come back we'll come back to the the schedule in a second, but just think about that for a second. Let me pull this up real quick. The Yankees, okay? Rizzo Il. Carpenter IL may or may not be back for the postseason. Benintendi, uh, same thing. Depends on how quick he recovers from the uh, wrist surgery. Cortez comes off the IL today. F. Ross and Abreu are right around the corner within a week or so. Zach Britton is any day now. You're in a position where you can get a few arms back and feel good about yourself. You really are. The crazy thing is you can't even blame Garrett Cole for any of this. Like people want to blame Garrett Cole for not winning a start. You can't do anything if you don't get any run support. If I remember correctly, the stat I saw was I want to say in his last five starts, he's gotten six runs of run support. Something crazy like that. There's only so much you can do as a starting pitcher and as a supposed ace of your staff. There's only so much you can do, man. But here's the situation I was talking about with the Yankees' schedule. So, they finish up Minnesota tonight, and they host the race for three over the weekend. You get Monday off, 
Then you go to a, an abbreviated two-game series in Boston. You got Thursday off. Then you go to Milwaukee for three. And then you get next Monday off. Uh, the following Monday, the 19th. If we're hosting Pittsburgh for two and then Boston for four. So right now, let's 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 factor this out, okay? So Tampa does not play tonight. Hypothetically, let's assume the Yankees win tonight. That puts you five and a half clear of Tampa entering this weekend series. If you can go out and sweep Tampa and essentially put them out of their misery and put them at eight and a half back with two and a half weeks to go. You put Tampa eight and a half back of you with let's call it 17, 18 games remaining. It's a steep hill to try and climb and make. And now you have them just focusing on the wild card at that point. And then the same thing kind of goes for Toronto because Toronto, they are playing at Texas. Who, while not a great team, they're fighters. And they, they're not going to just roll over and die. So there's some opportunity here. Where if you take care of business with the Rays, and then you take care of the Red Sox for two games. Now I know it's Red Sox-Yankees. You can't just go ahead and assume anything, but... The Red Sox are just struggling. They're a struggling bunch, man. The Yankees are in a prime position, really, to provide some distance to themselves and get bodies back in the bullpen to allow them a sigh of relief, allow them a chance to relax and push forward. But this is where we're at right now. This is this is where we're at with the Yankees. They need to. They need to continue with the momentum they have just suddenly built in this series of Minnesota. They need to harness whatever energy they have from that and keep it going. And welcome these injured bodies back with open arms. That's the position they're at. They need to just harness the energy of this week and keep on moving forward. Now, before I wrap things up, just want to remind you of our friends over in Mohawk Honda. They can continue to find the car you're looking for well, that's by searching their lot, any lot in the Capital Region, hell, any lot up and down the Eastern Seaboard. But the real opportunity for you is trading in or selling your vehicle because Mohawk Honda is buying cars. And in some cases, you may be able to sell it for more than you paid for it because that's just the way the supply chain is right now for dealerships. The supply chain is facing challenges still, which is creating tremendous selling opportunity for you, just like it has for the majority of 2022 when they were doing their Kelly Blue Book instant cash offers at Mohawk Honda earlier this year. And as always, the team of Mohawk Honda, they will make the buying and selling experience very easy. Talk to them. Talk to them. Cars of Current Servota. Trust Trav Landry. Louis the VIP Man Morales. C Mac, let's do a deal. Yes, Cam McKenna. Deanna Cowles, drive with Deanna or hell. Go right to the horse's mouth. Hear it from the leader in charge himself, the general manager, Greg Johnson. They will explain to you not just how you can get all that money you want for your car that you're trying to sell, but they'll also talk to you about potentially putting you into a newer vehicle, whether it be a brand new one or a certified pre-owned used vehicle at Mohawk Honda, and they'll make sure it's within your budget, it fits your lifestyle, whether you're single, just married, family with five kids, they will take care of you because of Mohawk Honda, Freeman's Bridge Road in Scotia. They want to buy your car, and they always go out of their way to please you. Now, real quick, before we get going, has, I feel like this is the one thing people are not really saying about the extensions that have been given out in Major League Baseball this year. Notably, two specific ones. Julio Rodriguez with the... Everybody's been focusing on how complex the contract is and all the options that exist for J-Rod when he wants to opt out and this, that, and the other thing. But here's the thing. You look at it from a bigger perspective, which is his extension along with the extension Michael Harris got from the Braves. 
And this is what I'm talking about. Teams have learned from the previous 20 to 25 years that it's economically irresponsible to just wait out until a guy finally hits free agency to then give them the the long-term big offer. Seattle jumped the gun maybe a little bit, but they were smart in the fact that they've been watching what Atlanta has done and, and the way they've approached things with the way they signed Acuna, with signing Harris, signing a few, uh, Austin Riley. They have recognized the Atlanta Braves approach of if they're doing so well now, why not just give them the contracts now? That way, on the back end, they're not 35, 36, 37. They're more 30, 31, 32, and still being high-quality, productive contributors to our ball club. And that's what Seattle saw with J-Rod, and I feel like that's how a lot of ball clubs are about to become. And they should become. I mean, just look at the Anthony Rendon fiasco. It's with the Angels. Look at uh, the Albert Pujols deal from Los Angeles, from the Angels. No single trend here. Um, even go back, some would even say the Mark Teixeira deal as an example. Um, there's a lot of them throughout history over the course of the years. And this is partially why this Aaron, the way Aaron Judge is playing this year and the way things played out before the season started kind of scares Yankee fans a little bit. Because you're in a position where you let Aaron Judge perform the way he was performing even before this season, and you let him get to age 30 before you even considered the idea of having a long-term negotiation. Now you're in a position where, damn, he's 30. Do I really want to sign this guy for eight more years? Now, I know he's only been the majors for six, well, really five full seasons. Because 2020, he only played 28 games, and I don't know you're really going to count that. Plus, that was a COVID season. It was a mess. It was very weird. So, he's really only played five full seasons as, as a Major League Baseball player. Okay? He's at a point where I'm not so sure I want to offer him anything more than six years or seven years. Which sounds sacrilege to a lot of Yankee fans. But think about, just think about the 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 biology of the whole thing. Like, I love Aaron Judge, but are you going to get the same Aaron Judge at 35, 36, 37 that you're getting now? Which is why when, I, when we were having conversations back in July about the trade deadline, that's why I wasn't so dead set against Juan Soto being a Yankee. Now, did I expect it? No. But I wasn't dead set against it because Juan Soto is, what, 23? I mean, it made sense. He turns 24 in October. Plus, he would have had the short porch and right to work with. Like, it made sense. But again, you were dealing with 23, 24 years old instead of 30 with, like, Aaron Judge. And teams are getting smarter. And noticing you need to capitalize while they're young and not wait anymore until they're 29, 30, 31 years old. So this, just see if this becomes a trend across the league. Because obviously the Braves have been proactive the last couple of years. And now the Mariners are, have been, got proactive with J-Rod. Now let's see how that works in the future with other teams and hot prospects. Like, for example, watch and see what happens with O'Neill Cruz for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Or watch what happens with Adley Rutschman with the Baltimore Orioles. Or Gunnar Henderson. Like, if Rutschman and Henderson turn into legit ball players that are all-star level in capabilities over the next year or two, 
I'll be shocked if you see Baltimore offer one of them a long-term deal to try and lock them down now before it's too late. We'll just see if this becomes a trend. Because I feel like the wheels are starting to turn, but they haven't quite gained the momentum and acceleration yet. So we'll just wait and see how that works out. But anyways, what well, we thank you. We, I thank you for uh, tuning in to episode 22 of Katie's Corner, presented by Godzilla Media, sponsored by a good friend's over at Mohawk Honda, Johnstone Supply, and at DraftKings. Enjoy this week of baseball. And if you're a football fan, enjoy the opening week of NFL. Enjoy college football. Enjoy all of it. We'll see you right back here next week for another episode of Katie's Corner.